My mill stole my rare collection to sell at a pawn shop and buy herself a new phone. Author is mentioned in the description. My best friend recommended Reddit to begin with has suggested this subreddit, and even said I should have posted here first. I'm dividing the post into two halves to make it easier to read. My mill is insanely entitled, and my wife's enabling of her has made our marriage very hard at times. Mill has come to us for money a lot because she keeps spending herself into a hole since she's a hoarder and a shopaholic. Her house is full of garbage, junk, and unopened stuff she never uses. The house is rodent infested too. She has one semi-clean room in the whole building, and it's the master bedroom. She's mocked it up like a little studio apartment with a futon to sleep on and use as a couch, an entertainment center with TV, and streaming, and a makeshift kitchen consisting of the adjoining bathroom, a mini fridge and a microwave. Mill's also overweight because she eats out a lot. Recently Mill came to us wanting me specifically to buy her a new smartphone as an unprompted gift, and she threw a massive fit when I refused. And I mean a child temper tantrum kind of fit. Why did she want a new phone so suddenly? Hers was two years old, that's literally it. As far as I know, it still worked fine. Even my wife has confirmed this. But Mill was resolute that she deserved a new phone. And before leaving, Mill yelled at us that we're supposed to be pampering her now that she's an old woman. She's 53. My wife also didn't want to buy her mother the phone because she gave her money not long before to make sure her bills were paid. I have quite a collection of vintage skeleton keys, and I mean good ones, like ones to particular hotels, the large ornate sergeants, brass railroad keys, reading hardware, etc. My collection as a whole should easily be worth two to three thousand dollars. Some of those keys are super rare. I kept them in a locked display cabinet, but a few days ago I came home to find my entire collection gone. The cabinet had been forced open. I checked the CCTV for the living room and saw my mill force open the cabinet with a small crowbar. She then put all the keys in a couple of boxes she brought with her and left with them. I called Mill right away and demanded she return my collection. She nonchalantly told me she sold the entire collection at pawn already and used the money for her new phone, then said it was my fault and she had to do it because I wouldn't give her the money. My wife was seemingly on my side until I said I was going to call police. She begged me to just drop it and even suggested I just start a new collection. I refuse to let it go, because a lot of those keys are not only expensive, they're irreplaceable. I spent 10 years building that collection, but my wife kept blowing up at me and telling me to just let it go. So I slept in the guest room that night and sought online help the next day when my best friend told me to try Reddit. I'd been a lurker before, but making an account wasn't hard. My mill has been trouble in the past, but this was the first time I know of that she'd stolen from us. I needed help, so I asked here. The resounding advice finally made me pull my head out of my bum to realize I was the only one keeping my marriage afloat, and it would likely never get any better if my wife wasn't on my side when her own mother steals something irreplaceable from me. Now to answer some quick questions I got before. 1. How did Mill get into the house? My wife unilaterally gave her a key when we moved in, that's why. 2. Why did I have CCTV cameras in the living room? Really, wouldn't you do that if you had something valuable on display there? 3. Is Mill on drugs? No idea, she's always been crazy. 4. Did Mill steal from us before? Not that I have been able to tell, and I've checked everything I could think of. 5. What kind of phone did Mill get? Not a clue, but probably one of the cheaper smartphones with the amount of money she got selling my stuff. Unless she's on a payment plan. 6. Did my wife use my money to placate her mother before? Yes she did. We primarily have separate accounts, but we do have a joint account we pay the bills with, so it's not used for savings. In two years of marriage, I'd say it happened roughly five times. Every time my wife took money from the joint account for her mother, she always replaced it on her next payday. Though in hindsight, I think she only did so because she knew I'd never let it go, because she would always have an attitude with me for a few days after. I was in a bad marriage fog before. But this whole situation has snapped me right out of it. 7. Will I lock down my credit? Already I have. Though I'm not sure my wife or her mother would be so stupid to do something like that after Mill was recently arrested. I have gotten my collection back and hidden it somewhere my wife and Mill have no idea where it is. I'll provide more detail in another post tomorrow. Edit. Since it keeps being mentioned, yes I did call police, yes an arrest was made, yes my wife is a soon-to-be ex. Know that I'm taking many precautions right now. Update 1. Back to what happened that day. Police did come and take my statement a bit over an hour after I called the non-emergency line. I had video footage and the documentation of my collection ready. And then there was some texts I went out of my way to get from Mill to bait her into a confession. 
I wanted as much evidence as possible so she couldn't lie to police. When I texted her demanding she get my collection back, she actually lol'd and told me not a chance, and even boasted that she thought I was a pathetic son-in-law, and my key collection was tacky anyway. I told her to at least tell me what pawn shop she sold the keys to so I could go buy them back, and how much they paid her for them. And the dimwit admitted it all right away with glee and text. I had everything I needed for the police before they even showed up. The cops took the whole matter more seriously than I thought. I was worried they'd call it a civil matter since the thief was my mill, and she had a key to the house. But they arrested mill before long, and police went to the pawn shop before it closed to retrieve my collection. I got it all back from police after a couple of days, and for the moment I've put the collection in a safe secure place that no one can get to. The pawn shop pretty much gave up the entire key collection to police right away like it was a bag of hot potatoes. Though I scrutinized every important key brought back, as far as I can tell it's all there. That was a huge sigh of relief. I took time off work and barely slept for two days because of this ordeal. Also, the cabinet mill broke into is pretty much a loss since she mangled the lock and doors prying it open. Thankfully it wasn't an antique, and just something I got used for $50, so I'm just going to take it to the dump sooner or later. From her texts before, I found out Mill sold the whole collection to the pawn for a whopping total of $300, greater than lesser than for a collection of hundreds of antique keys valued at 2 to 3 grand as a total. That low number felt like a punch in the gut to me. Likely the pawnbroker knew how valuable the collection could be as a whole. I mean, it's not like hitting a jackpot or anything. But money is still money, especially when a dumb little lady walks in with a box of goodies. Anyone else hear Mr. Krabs laughing? Anyway, the cost of repayment to the shop was supposed to be on Mill, but my wife paid them back out of our joint account instead. From what the shop owner said, Mill told them the key collection belonged to her deceased husband, and she was sick of the whole collection sitting in storage, so they believed her. But just to be clear, she's not a widow. Her husband divorced her and left the state around 15 years ago. Mill lives off social security and food stamps. She also holds garage sales every few months. And she often demanded our soda and beer cans so she could get the deposit money recycling them. Mill doesn't drive. She gets around on an electric scooter that tows a bicycle trailer. She lives in a long paid off house and she would not be having money troubles if she wasn't overspending every month. And she always counts on my wife to pick up the slack when she comes up short. My wife and I got in a huge fight when she got home because I had her mother arrested. But I told her I'm done with her enabling of her toxic mother. I said I was changing the locks as a P and banning her mother from the house. And I also said that either we got marriage counseling or I'd be inquiring about my options for separation from an attorney. I thought my wife would beg me not to do that. But instead she just called me horrible, packed a suitcase and walked out to go to a motel. I just sat on the couch and let her go. She repeatedly looked like she was waiting for me to ask her to stay. But I didn't. In the morning she texted me she'd be bailing her mother out and wanted me transfer her the money to pay for it since I was the one who got her mother arrested. When I said no, all I got back was a sarcastic wow. And that was it. Not too long later I had a gut feeling and checked the balance on the shared bank account. And my wife had taken out a lot of money. I wasn't sure if all that was needed for bail, so I called the pawn shop later. The owner confirmed my wife had come in and paid him back the $300 that he'd paid her mother for the keys. He was also quite angry and said he didn't want any of us in his shop ever again. I understood his anger, and weirdly enough had a fairly long talk with this guy. And he understands now that I'm not part of the crazy. I tried to call and text my wife for hours, but she didn't answer. That evening I managed to find her. I knew which motel she'd likely go to, and I was right. It was both cheap and not far away. I found her car, and then figured out which room she was in. She looked positively shocked to see me when she opened the door. I confronted her about the money she'd used from our shared account. She basically said that since I refused to pay her mother's bail after I was the one who had her arrested, she got the money from me another way. Then smugly stated she wasn't paying that money back into the shared account this time, and told me that's the karma I get, before shutting the door in my face. Then said through the door she'd call the cops on me if I didn't leave. The smug look she'd given me reminded me of nasty teenage girls when they get their way. It really ticked me off. I already knew my marriage was pretty much over, but that night it really sank in. I had a long sit down with some old video games and cola to think about my future. The house is rented, so I'm not renewing my half of the lease and will soon be apartment hunting. The last month of the lease is March, but I may leave sooner depending on how soon I can find an apartment. We have no kids yet, thank God, so that's another thing I currently have in my favor. 
The next day I changed the locks on the house and removed all of my money from the joint bank account and stopped all automated payments to and from it. I made sure to take only the amount of money I'd put into the account. There was still more than enough in it for me to break even and still leave the minimum required balance on the account. Either way the cost of Mills bail and paying back the pawn shop was now entirely out of my wife's pocket now. And I don't think she's noticed yet. But it shouldn't be long. I've been to a couple different divorce lawyers already, and I picked the second one since the first seemed like they were only there for a paycheck. I'll have the divorce papers served soon. I loved my wife, but it's clear she didn't love me, so I can't stay with her anymore. She can have her thieving hoarder mommy all to herself now. We both have very comparable incomes, so I'll be pushing for a clean split divorce. This woman didn't deserve me, and I fell for her act. She didn't want a husband, she wanted an insurance plan. I'll be clear on this, I won't be changing my mind about divorce. My soon-to-be ex-wife can beg and love bomb all she wants, if she even bothers to. I've never been her number one, and I'm not gonna settle for being number two in my own marriage. It is over. Edit. Yes I asked the landlord to allow me to change the locks. He was all for it when I told him what happened. All I had to do was mail him a copy of the new key. He doesn't want my mill to ever have a key to the house again. Update 2. Just because I found the thought of it humorous, I'll be referring to my wife as wifey a lot from now on. Also, I know I seem like I'm posting too fast, but remember this originally started around 10 days ago, and I've not wasted time in getting the divorce started. I also apologize for the length of this post as I could not keep it short. It really didn't take me long to find and hire a divorce lawyer. And she's mean. Yes, my lawyer is a woman, and she seems pretty good at her job. She asked me a couple of times if I was really sure I wanted to do this. But once I explained my full story to her and showed some evidence, she agreed with me when I said I wanted to start a SAP. So she got the ball rolling. Oh this divorce is going to cost me. But I don't care. I'll rebuild my savings later as a free man. I didn't even want to rent the house I'm currently living in anyway. Wifey pushed for that. I'd have been happy staying in our old apartment we used to share until we could have actually afforded to buy a house together instead. But that's obviously never happening. I'll be paying a lot less for an apartment once we separate. Before coming home, wifey spent some time at a cheap motel when she bailed her mother out of jail. And she even threatened to call police on me when I went to see her there. I changed the locks with my landlord's permission while wifey was still away and sent her a text saying I'd done so. But I guess she'd not bothered to look since she never responded. So upon returning home she ended up pounding on the door and screaming at me to let her in. I just watched her through the doorbell cam and let her keep it up for a while before she finally got on her phone to call me. I was already walking home from having had dinner with my best friend when she called, and I pointed out the text she'd not bothered to read. When I got home to let her in, she was puffy-cheeked, teary-eyed, and red with a bit of cat butt face. I had a new key ready for her, and told her if she gave a copy to her mother again, I'd be notifying our landlord, as they were already very angry she'd given her mother a key to begin with. Not sure what the landlord could have done, but it was enough to make wifey comply for the moment. Plus, I'm not gonna be living here much longer anyway. I mill still believes she did absolutely nothing wrong, and is playing victim to wifey every chance she gets. She's not allowed over anymore, for obvious reasons, and I've been repeatedly called a monster by her and wifey. I've never been more glad that Mill has no friends, because then she'd be telling them all her convoluted version of the story to paint me as a villain, I just know it. She was told how much my key collection is roughly worth, and what kind of felony charges she could be facing. Though my collection was returned fully intact, so she may get the charges lessened. I'd like to hope she gets a decent punishment at least. But I'm not really counting on the system to throw the book at a manipulator like her. As I said in my previous post, wifey also paid her mother's bail, and what she owed to the pawn shop with money out of our joint bank account, and then smugly told me that she wouldn't be putting the money back. Basically that was a terrible power move, and her only way to try and put all the cost on me. I've since removed everything I had in that account, and stopped all future payments to it so she can't spend my money too. And I've changed my passwords to pretty much everything. Wifey flipped the hell out on me for it once she finally checked the account a couple days ago, because that meant that what she paid for Mills bail, and reimbursing the pawn shop was all in her money only and now there was no more access to my funds to supplement her own with. I just ignored her tantrum and went into the home office to watch anime on my computer. She banged on the door for a while demanding I talk to her. I just stayed quiet and put on headphones. Wifey has repeatedly demanded I drop all charges against her mother, and even said that if I really loved her, I would not only stop all this, I'd cover the cost too. When I kept refusing, she moved into the spare bedroom. 
She tried to kick me out of the master bedroom first. But I made it clear I'm not giving up the master bedroom when she's the one at fault. She tried to start taking my stuff out. But I just blocked her while pointing my finger at her face and said no. Like I was talking to a dog. She ended up crying and saying I was demeaning her. But I didn't care. Then for some more deception on her part. She admitted to me out of pure spite that until this mess had started. She'd been planning on letting her mother come live with us full time soon because of the state of her hoarder house. She boasted that she was just gonna move her in while I was at work. I told her we were supposed to be equal partners before this all happened. And I was sick of her unilateral decision making. And as long as I'm paying 50% of the lease, her mother will not be living here. And if she tried, I'd throw all her mother's stuff out immediately. Wifey looked like she wanted to explode, and stormed off to have a drink and a loud phone call with her mother in the kitchen. I just started removing her stuff from the master bedroom and left it in the other room for her. I've put a new lock on the door to the master bedroom too. I had wifey served at her job, which she said really embarrassed her in front of her colleagues. And she flipped out on me again once she got home. Apparently she didn't take my threats of divorce seriously until those papers were actually in her hands. She said I couldn't do this, but I told her I was done. She made it more than clear where she stands. I told her I learned a rather interesting phrase online. When people show you who they really are, believe them. And she's clearly shown me who she really is. And it's not the woman I fell in love with. That woman disappeared and got replaced with an entitled mommy's girl who refuses to act her age right after we got married. Which makes it pretty obvious she did that intentionally. At this point, I don't think she ever loved me. Just my wallet. I can't stay married to a woman who conned me into marrying her. Then she started screaming at me that she wasn't a gold digger. So I asked her if she'd have been inclined to stay married to me if I'd done the all same things to her. She tried to deny it at first, then looked around like she was trying to find a better answer. Then she just gaslit to deflect as usual. But I had none of it. I told her right then and there that I'm not renewing the lease on the house with her because I don't want to live with a petulant woman child I can't trust. And if she wants to keep the house, she can go ahead and start a new lease to move her mother in once I'm gone. Finally that's when the real waterworks started. She said I was destroying our family. And I said what family? And pointed out how we don't have kids. And her mother is more important to her than me. We. Have. No. Family. Then I just walked away. She loudly cried in the living room for hours, but I ignored her. Now she's giving me the hardcore silent treatment and won't look me in the eyes. I'm actually enjoying it, which just seems to make her angrier. As an added bonus, I warned my current landlord about wifey wanting to move her mother in. I gave him all the details I had about Mill, the state of her hoarder house, and how much of a deceptive mommy's girl wifey is, and warned him that if he let my Mill live in any property he owns, she would turn it into an utter disaster. He thanked me for telling him, and is now not going to let wifey renew the lease on her own if she tries. He'll be advertising the property soon. Wifely has no idea yet, and likely would have only just barely been able to afford the house with her mother's help anyway. One more thing. Yesterday someone warned me to take my name off the joint bank account entirely so I would not be on the hook for any overdraft. I took that to heart and went to the bank to get it done. Only took a few minutes to do it, and the bank is 10 minutes away by car. Oh, good now. I've been working from home lately, so I had the time. All statements from the account were already printed and given to my lawyer too, so I can wash my hands of it. Edit, I don't know if it's the same rules everywhere, but the bank had no problem removing my name from the account as a cosigner when I pushed for it. There were no debts on the account and had plenty more than the minimum balance. The bank likely did tell wifey, but whether or not she knows I did it, it does not matter as she's currently not talking to me. Edit 2. I've noticed a few comments pointing out how it was completely unnecessary. I pointed out my lawyer is a woman. Looking back on it, I did write that like a complete jerk. I was just rather excited in the moment about it. No that's not an excuse, I acknowledge that. But how quickly this lawyer helped me just made me so happy. I'll make sure not to sound like such an idiot when speaking of her again from now on. The reason why I'm so broken and vindictive now. Let me be clear on some details. I've been told many times that I'm condescending, twisting things, acting like a douche, etc. Well apart from how hot-blooded I got from all this, I'll tell you about the crap I dealt with before coming to Reddit. My wife used to act very different around me the three years we were together before getting married. She was kind, regularly scolded her mother if she did anything bad, didn't expect me to help her mother with anything either. She acted like she was perfect around me. Her mother was also a lot kinder and more apologetic toward me before I married her daughter. She was believe it or not, kinda a sweet lady. Apart from her being a hoarder, I used to be very sympathetic towards her. 
and I hoped she'd get better, but things only got worse after saying my vows. As soon as we were back from the honeymoon, my wife and Mill were very different. Things became very their way or the highway, and I was treated like the bad guy by her and her mother for even having a different opinion on something. They regularly ganged up on me when they wanted to make me wrong about things. Wifey became a total brat and was acting like a rebellious teenager at home. Our bedroom life became pretty dead too, in part because I get migraines, but also because she was never in the mood. We hadn't been intimate in four months before I even posted an AITA here. I have a bit of a low drive, so it didn't bother me too much. But she rarely initiated unless she had something to be happy about. Wifey remained her other self outside in front of people. She just took her mask off at home once she'd trapped me in this marriage. I've already explained the smug bratty attitude she had towards me when she used our shared bank account to pay her mother's bail and reimbursed the pawn shop, and then acted like that money would be out of my half of the account, or about her smug attitude when admitting she'd been planning to have her mother come live with us without asking if I thought it was okay. I can't take it anymore. She's made unilateral decisions on so much these past few years. Even giving Mill a spare house key was all her. And that's what got my collection stolen. And before Mill stole my collection, I just shut up and took the abuse from them both like the good little boy they wanted me to be. Why? Because I thought I was in love. I was deep in a marriage fog. But then people here pulled me out. It feels like I'm married to a spoiled teenager that wants to tell me to talk to the hand if I even want to have a frank discussion about anything unless we're in public. I get that this behavior has been deeply ingrained into her by her mother, but she refused any sort of counseling. If she'd agreed to the counseling and believed the counselor would have agreed with her, I'd know she'd need help. But the way she acts tells me she knows exactly what she's doing, and doesn't care. I didn't even want the house we're living in, but wifey made it her hill to die on. I wanted to save so we could actually buy a house in a few years instead. But she wanted to keep up with the Johnses, and distance from her mother wasn't a factor. Our old apartment was actually closer to Mill. Wifey just really wanted the house, and practically said it was happening whether I liked it or not. Sure the extra space was nice, but I had to buy most of the new furniture. I'm miserable here. That's why I got so hot-blooded, and many here think I'm going scorched earth. I'm not. I could have actually done far worse. All I want is out of this house, and out of this marriage. I am regretful that I had my wife served at her job. That went too far, but that's one of the few things I regret in this situation. And please, don't blame that on my lawyer. That decision was all me. I wanted some payback, and I made a bad call. But I can't undo it now that it's already been done. Wifey is still giving me the silent treatment, and we've been acting completely indifferent towards each other. I'd be completely fine if it stays this way till I can move out. 